we um, we love to share our uh, knowledge with uh, with our uh, customers. And what what is this ear in the head? I like this logo. What's the thought process that? Ah, that that is in fact well we uh, maybe don't see that well enough in the video, but we are in a very nice castle. Yes. So these are the these are the um, um, areas of the of the castle. Uh, you would not believe this that company is yeah. actually in the middle of. The yeah. full, fa I, I sure. can see the cows and the sheep and <laughs> and and the, and the cattle there. This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for supply chain community. Hi, folks! Uh, welcome to one more episode of the Supply Chain Show. Again, I'm uh, the tour of Netherlands. I'm in the Helmond right now, which is one of the beautiful cities. I'm, I'm going to show you some pictures. So today we're going to talk about something very interesting, which is demand forecasting as a service. As you know, SCM Dujo has recently launched Supply Chain Expert Marketplace, and this is one of my vision to find one of the best experts on our platform so we can promote their services. So today we're going to talk about what the supply chain service, which is demand forecasting as a service, uh, what is the benefit, how the businesses can hire, and who else uh, as, you know the person uh, can talk to except Luke. So Luke is a CEO and the, one of the founders for Ion. So without any further ado, Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you, Manasseh. Right. So quickly tell, tell, talk about what Ion does. You know, as it's fantastic facility you've got. Just tell us what you do. Obviously, I can tell a lot of things. Uh, let's uh, let's focus on the main things. We were founded uh, 25 years uh, ago. Right. Uh, one of the I was one of the founders. Uh, we focused completely on planning and forecasting from that moment onwards. But we obviously also changed that uh, last 10 years with uh, data science, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, integrate that into uh, planning and forecasting. Um, doing works with uh, universities uh, in, in that respect. Um, and our main clients are billion dollar uh, companies right. um, in the industries like uh, uh, high tech, in the industries like uh, pharmaceuticals, medical device, Process industry and and consumer products, so all of these uh, these kind of industries. Good. So if I break down your main let's call it product and services, so you have business consulting, right? You have again supply chain focus, uh, supply chain planning or inventory service. Second, you also have a software of your own, yes, right, which is the Ion Pro Promo, yes. right, and Ion Stop where we can run their forecasting. It's like a software service. You have master classes. You tell us about that. Masterclasses, yeah, we um, we love to share our uh, knowledge with uh, with our uh, customers and share it with uh, companies that uh, would like to make a, a step up. Yeah. We have uh, masterclasses on on demand uh, planning, supply, yeah. on, uh, on inventory, right. uh, also more on the analytics uh, right. area, and we have the different kind of forms. We can um, uh, we can be at your uh, um, at your company yeah. having a really dedicated uh, masterclass, but also having uh, um, Having a more general mass class where we group people uh, and companies uh, uh, together yep. and also have them that cross learning. Fantastic. And the fifth pillar, though, which I'm super interested in, we do a separate video, which is a supply chain gaming. Because what I've saw today in the presentation, they have got fantastic games of SNOP and planning, and there's one more, which was a ball or something. Sorry, remember? There's the one more game, right? Which was, which was that? Anyway, we'll yeah, do a separate video. Exactly. That uh, would be very good to have a separate video. Also, because we're extending that scope to online, uh, online, uh, online gaming, and would be great to have there the expert uh, telling the complete so, story. That's not a topic of today's video. The topic of today's video is is demand for stack forecasting as a service. So, explain what this service is. How does it work? Start from there. Yeah, we see uh, in the uh, uh, a lot of. Um, uh, request from our customers that they would like to have a more robust uh, uh, process. Usually uh, uh, planning processes are monthly processes and you only need uh, the, the people working on that process three, four, five days uh, a month. Yeah. So that means what do you do with the rest of the time? Uh, how, how can you keep those uh, uh, people happy the full month? Do you have the, the, the right skill set? So all these aspects um, we, we started something like 10 years ago with our initial uh, services. What we, what we uh, do is we uh, get the data from our uh, customers in a very secure uh, way um, and we will handle them uh, um, in, in such a way that the best forecast uh, there is based on the statistics comes out and we implement that uh, uh, in their planning systems. Mm -hmm. So we, we are not the planning system itself. We right. only have the, the service to optimize the models and uh, optimize the parameters. Right. 
And because there's a lot of volatility in the market, yeah. that's uh, really important to have that in the monthly uh, process. Right. So, so basically, in simply put, you can have, if I am a head of supply chain somewhere, we sign a contract, we share your data, you have enormous experience and you are aware of a lot of disruptions happening, you apply your consultative approach, you find the best model, you run the best model, you give them a data with the recommendations as well. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Okay. Now, having said that, sounds great to me, it should happen and most companies should do it. Now, if I am a, a head of supply chain somewhere, big company, Generally, they have, you know, every plant have a demand plan or they have a central SNOP team, the one forecasting team, they use some kind of software, which they pay a ridiculous amount of money, like 100,000 to 200,000 euros. And they got four people in, for example, EMEA region doing the one forecasting, right? Why would I hurry? Well, that is a good question. And obviously there is a, a, is a trade uh, trade off. We have really the, 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 the best um, uh, experts in, in house, in, in our house, and we can also provide them a, uh, a growth uh, plan at, at uh, our company, at uh, Rayon. When you have a small team, uh, uh, then you also have the, the risk people uh, moving ahead and you lose a lot of expertise. Mm -hmm. Well, we built in that expertise and robustness in our uh, process. Mm -hmm. So we have here the experts and doing, uh, doing these things uh, for you. We have also a robust uh, system and we have the business uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. So changing in the market, we have those, also those uh, that experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that th those are the main reasons right. to uh, to hire. Yeah, uh, but there's hires. another business case, right, mm -hmm. which I think you are most. Which is if I don't have these capabilities, but my business is growing, right, and that means rather than going about building this capability, we just come to you, right. Absolutely. But what it is in the, the business case, uh, obviously, when you have an improved uh, forecast accuracy, usually uh, um, that's 10 to 15 percent higher that we can achieve in that uh, robust process together with uh, the customer. Yeah. And uh, we can achieve that. So that's one part. The other uh, part is that um, our processes are then efficient. So basically, you can take decisions earlier. Right. And if you take an earlier decision, it's also bringing more money for uh, for our customers. And bring all the, as you mentioned, that your forecasting processes can become, because of expertise, 10 to 15 percent better focus accuracy, which results to better service levels, you know, less cost, uh, less inventory, uh, stock outs, and so on and so forth. All the benefit which comes with a good focus. Absolutely. All right, great. Okay, now I know how you do the service. Let's then we talk about the the. I think you mentioned the data part, which is very important. Uh, quality is clear, which is the major. So I'm clear on that. Now, how you deliver this? How I'm, I'm going to work with you on this? Exactly, because a large part is based on uh, on, on trust. So how how do we build our trust? We um, we uh, start with build, operate, yeah. and transfer. So. Right. Uh, we build it uh, based on a, on a business case and we do a proof of concept. So one right. uh, and proof of concept is that it works from a technical point of view, right. but also it proves that we can achieve higher forecast accuracy uh, based on the data that is available. Right. So that's, that's the build part. Then we operate it um, um, into our uh, customers as, um, as a project yeah. and that will take bah, approximately 10, 10 weeks and then we run it. Uh, um, is there any pre-assessment in there somewhere? And there's a pre-assessment. Right. And that pre-assessment really gives the uh, foundation for the for the business case, right. uh, where you, where we prove that it will bring value to uh, to our customers. The customers, okay. So we discuss the quality and the and and you can do this globally, right? We can do this globally, and we have done this. Uh, uh, I can a few name a few examples yeah. without naming the. Uh, uh, names of our customers, uh, a global pharmaceutical company where they uh, they had planning in all the countries uh, right. where we made that more efficient from a central uh, centralized point of view, from a statistical point of view. Yeah. And then um, yeah, they, they could uh, reduce the number of people in all of the uh, specific countries, making the, the team centrally a bit uh, bigger mm -hmm. and have their business uh, uh, yeah. included into that process. So there we made a step up in the forecast accuracy, but also reduce some uh, uh, cost uh, uh, so for that company. They, or they can use the people somewhere else to do something else. And better. use it for more qualitative work. Yeah, so, and that was also a growth path for they, those kind of uh, right. people. No, and I think uh, you are not just that big, you're a global company, right? Just tell about, about that a bit. Absolutely. So um, uh, we were originated uh, uh, in, in the Netherlands, but yeah. um, 
I personally, I, uh, I worked for, for Philips. Uh, some other uh, uh, people really worked at, the, uh, at our customers, so that's, that's good to know. And th those were all global uh, customers. So it's... Um, you are in, uh, in how many countries? Yeah, we are in uh, the Netherlands, but we are in, in, in Europe, we are in Switzerland, in, in Ireland, right. in, in Germany. So those are the, the headquarters of, uh, uh, of our companies for the European, but also for the global uh, market. <laughs> And uh, in, in 22, we also started uh, uh, locally uh, in, in the US. So we have a team in uh, US. growing a team in the US. Yeah. And we're trying to make a further step. So you are growing, right? So, okay. Now Absolutely. that's why we're doing it. So we can promote your, your work and release in Africa. So that's, that, sounds, that sounds great. Now we move in the conversation again. So uh, we go in, we find, we like the planning of the service, right? And with your expertise, that sounds all good. Data transfer is clear to me as well. But one of the things which I would like to say, okay, since you're a consultant, you know, I mean, how the costing look like, you know, how you model that costing. Yeah, we have a different uh, way of, uh, of doing that. Uh, the, there's a part in, uh, in our uh, systems, uh, like using, using uh, our process and using our system. So that one, that's one part. The other part is um, using our uh, expertise and the people uh, busy with that. Um, and that's that's a monthly uh, fee based on uh, what we do on a monthly uh, uh, basis. Um, we can also talk about uh, um, uh, uh, like yeah, uh, like um, business sharing models. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, when we talked about it with our customers, then we uh, improved their business that much that they say, okay, well, uh, sharing that is a bit too much. Too much paid, like, uh, <laughs> so it really brings the value. Uh, there. I, I, I like to do this business. That's my office. If you hire me, I'll do. Don't pay me, just do business here, right? Uh, we sure we're gonna make more money, but I know that's not people want to do it. So is 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 basically basically a monthly retainer kind of thing, yes. a fee for X amount of time. So if I compare again, again, think, I'm thinking like a C chief supply chain officer or something, right? So if I compare having a four or five demand planners or SNOP people or planning mm -hmm. people and versus your capabilities. Uh, how you say it's so on par or lower? I mean, just from uh, your yeah, it, it, it will be uh, depends a bit on where they are located. Right. But, uh, but if they are located in, in Europe, in, in Europe, then then it's really uh, on, on par. Then on then, par. then then it's on par. But we are also covering for the risk because if you have four people and two uh, uh, are gone and one is on maturity leave. We take that risk. Uh, right. and we we will cover that. We get the people trained in the background, right. and that process keep on uh, going. So we we'll use that risk. Yeah. We also say that uh, our uh, team will improve forecast security right. and reduce inventory. Right. So because we're now talking about forecasting, but right. we do the similar processes yeah. for inventory optimization. So right. inventory parameters uh, as well. Yeah. As well and also for network design and network optimization. Okay. okay. So okay. that is really. Great. So, um, so that business case is there, and we reduce the risk, and we improve the performance right. so, of our so, so, customers. So, in the demand forecasting as a service, inventory optimization comes in the package kind of thing. Uh, or a separate yes, service. It's a well. It's a. It's a, you. Sh you should see it as building blocks. Uh, building so, blocks, building yeah. blocks. So, uh, you start uh, usually you start with forecast accuracy, yeah, and um, and then if you have then the inventory parameters and models that you use yeah. in the integral supply chain, uh, you can optimize. And then, yeah, and then you can really make the, the steps. And it's not only about reducing inventory, but it's also optimizing inventory. So it could yeah. be that the total inventory level is the same. Yeah. But um, you have a right to inventory. And then you, and then you yeah. can serve more to your customers. Better service levels. Absolutely. Reducing excess and obsolete. Uh, better safety stocks and so on and so forth. Okay. okay. Great. Now, the, the, the other point would be is, okay, so I, I've got it, I understand what you do, but I've been a demand planner myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been a supply chain leader, supply chain manager into a multi, you know, multi plan organization. One of the plan, issue with the demand planning folks are, or demand forecasting is, you've got to understand business of it, yes. right? It's not just about data. Okay, so, you got to understand what vertical you are serving, what kind of, I know, data can tell you seasonality, it can tell you the trends, it can tell you, you know, your master data, how mm -hmm. runners and repeaters, data can tell you all of that. Yes. But what data cannot tell you is the exact nuances of the vertical you are serving, because the way you, you can apply the supply chain forecasting models into pharmacy, and then you can apply the models into electrical distribution, but the nuances of pharmacy because of these sensitivities around uh, you know, the expiry dates and similarly, if you go to the food sector, it goes to, so one my point is, uh, if I try to hire your demand focusing service, 
how quickly or how challenging it is for you to learn that nuances of the vertical. Exactly. So that, that's, that's a really good uh, question. Therefore, uh, uh, our company is not just a data uh, company, handling your data. So we have a business consultancy, uh, understanding your, uh, your industry, uh, and we have the data uh, element. So um, it also comes back in the, in the inventory. For example, if you have, a, have an item in a, in a consumer product that does not sell that much with mm -hmm. high volatility, mm -hmm. yeah, you can, you can solve it by a lot of inventory uh, uh, or something else, but, mm -hmm. but maybe that, that costs too much. So ba basically you take a bit of a higher risk of a, a stock out. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the pharmaceutical company where you have maybe a similar process from a data point of view, uh, mm -hmm. similar characteristics, and it's, and it's a medicine for a cancer patient, mm -hmm. well, obviously you don't want to get out of stock at all. Yeah. So therefore, is the forecast accuracy, uh, etc., say is the same, but it should be interlinked with your inventory policy and your risk taking in the inventory. And obviously there, there you need to optimize yeah. and not always reduce. I'm going to make this example slightly complicated because that's a real case come from our, my, one of my potential consulting customer did not win the business, but, but it, and I'll tell you why. Because one of the problems they want to solve it, they were into supplying kits to the hospitals. The thing is in the operations theater, you have to come up with a full kit, yes. right? But the thing is, it has to be a fresh kit, but the doctors can only use part of it. Yes. The rest goes back to some distributor, right? Or, and then they have to supply a fresh kit. And they're saying, come up with a model where I can always have my right kit. Yes. And I was like, okay, complicated problem. So what do you have to say? Great. Well, well, this is, this is a great example. And, and here you really combine business consultancy with data and, and processes. Right. So from a forecasting point of view, uh, there are two things that you need to forecast. And there, therefore, it's important to have the project first. What do we want to forecast? We want to forecast uh, uh, the sales, yeah. basically the delivery. Uh, and it's not yet a sales, basically the sales is when, for example, a heart stance goes into the patient. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the actual sale. Yes. But then the rest of the kits, uh, uh, the, the outer uh, sizes that you need for the surgery, because you, you don't know that exactly up front, you, uh, the surgeon only knows that when he's in the hospital. Yeah, what he needs. What he needs, and then the rest goes back. Yeah. So you need to forecast two things. One is that, uh, that part, but also in the phasing in and phasing out of these kind of products, you don't need to have to overproduce the outer sites. So you need to have your logistics more centrally, mm -hmm. to have the outer sites um, uh, in the warehouse and serve it to the to the customers. So you need to forecast um, really the patient uh, right. uh, use, but also the delivery and, and then the end of life. And yeah, it's so also very important uh, in this. Very case. good point, Luke. And and this is where I think your expertise is is coming into play because generally when you think people think about this problem solved, they're only coming from demand forecasting or the knowledge of demand forecasting. That you do the statistics, do the SNOP. SNOP alone cannot solve this problem. Actually, you have to link the whole SNOP with your logistic network design to solve that problem, correct? Absolutely. Amazing. Very inspiring, very good. Thank you very much for this tip. Thank you. Right now, so uh, any final thoughts on this before we finish? Um, yeah, obviously, uh, we would like to help our customers. So if anyone uh, of our customers recognize uh, the things that I uh, say as a challenge, we'd be happy to uh, uh, help them. How people find you? Of course, your this website, ion.com. Ion.com. That's it. Ion. What, what is this air the head? I like this logo. What's the thought process behind it? Ah, that, that is in fact, well, we uh, maybe don't see that well enough in the video, but we are in a very nice castle. Yes. So these are the, these are the um, um, areas of the, of the castle uh, and reflected uh, in the combination. Actually, I'll take a picture <laughs> and we put that in. You would not believe this tech company is actually in the middle of the full farm. I, I can see the cows and the sheep and, <laughs> and, and, the, and the cattle there. And I couldn't believe the office in there. But we are moving yes. to a new office, more, more tech friendly, I would say. No, it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's actually very peaceful. I feel like sleepy. Is that peaceful? But anyway, good conversation. No, guys, uh, thank you, Luke, for being so transparent. And uh, I am, as I said, as a SM Dujo, as we are launched the marketplace, is actually the purpose is to get access to the people like Ion, Luke, who owns great expertise and into a very, very complicated stuff. You know, like supply chain network design, your demand planning is the forecasting, IVP, inventory optimization, business gaming, supply chain, gaming. all of them are hot topics and given what's happening in the space of artificial intelligence and data science, a lot of people using that buzzword, but not many people are applying it. And Ion is one of the people 
or the group of people I know for a fact that they are applying it. So you can hire them through me as a dojo or you can just contact them directly. Either way, we are friends. We just want to help you. Thank you for watching and uh, hope you like the video. Like, share, sub subscribe. Keep it simple. Keep it real. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye.